Hey everybody, welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. My name is Edson Naimi and today we'll be taking a look at making a 3D mesh from real world images with any graphics card. Um, we'll be using Meshroom in fact, but we'll be using a free open source version of Meshroom, um, which is catered to OpenCL, so it doesn't have CUDA as a requirement which means you can use it on Intel and AMD GPUs. So without further ado, let's get into the video! Now before we could use Beshru, we'll just have to extract it from its zip. So just right click on the zip and then you just press extract here. And you just wait for that to finish. While that's finishing, uh, make sure to get your photos ready. Um, it's not really important how you take them. You should just uh, keep note that you should take one uh, from each angle at least once. But um, the more angles you take, the better the result will be. There's not a set finite limit on how many photos you can use. So feel free to go crazy. If you really want something pretty good looking, I'd recommend about 50 images. So if you go to the Meshroom CL 0.5 folder, and open Meshroom, and just wait for that to open. Sometimes it doesn't bring up the window, you'll just have to look up there. Yeah, awesome. So now that Meshroom, Meshroom, <laughs> Meshroom sorry, is open, uh, you'll notice something a bit different from the NVIDIA equivalent or the original. Uh, the nodes are a bit different. I think there's two less nodes and they all have CL appended to the names because they're uh, OpenCL versions of the nodes. So you see here there's drop image files folders. I like to just take a folder full photos and drop it in. Awesome. Now you'll see here at the top left there will be this fit. It's Practically the thing that tells you if your metadata with the images is correct. If it's green, it's good. If it's anything other than green, you'll have to go look on the internet for your specific camera and uh, look at the metadata and plop it into the database folder. Uh, you'll see when you hover on this if you have something other than green. But if you're really satisfied with the result, uh, you can just go. Um, something I'd recommend before you go is to ch make sure that no pictures are blurry because if a picture is really blurry it will affect the rest of the imagery. So just take a look through every image and check that there aren't any blurry ones. If you're happy with the uh, images you can just press start here. It will ask you do you want to save the project. You can just press save and then you can pick where you want to save it. I recommend you save it uh, to a folder, like its own folder, right? So I'll just make a new folder here, and this will be our tutorial project. Save, and then you can just press start and you're ready to go. And now here's the finished reconstruction. Now before I show you the end result in Blender, I'll just be showing you the end result in Blender because with the next example right after this I'm going to be more advanced in Blender and take you through how to clean up the mesh. Um, so you know these nodes at the bottom left? Well, if yours failed at structure from motion CL, there's a big chance you didn't have enough reference images. If it doesn't work at multi-view stereo CL, there's a big chance that you didn't use the right metadata, like uh, sensor info and all that. And if it didn't work at texturing, CL or mesh filtering, it's probably because of the same reason. But usually it already ends at multi-view stereo CL. So if structure from motion CL didn't work, take more photos. If multi-view stereo didn't work, go look for your camera on the internet or take uh, photos with a different camera. Now here we have a 3D render done in cycles of the reconstructed mesh. And to show you a bit about this mesh, I'll just close down this render, go to the layout tab, and uh, let you see the mesh up close and personal. You can see, well, firstly the textures are looking really good. 
but it actually reconstructed the mesh very well. Even the small like bumps, it just did it really well. And this is with adding a bit of a decibit filter to just lower the amount of vertices. It didn't have much info about this at the top, but uh, if you had a picture at the top, it would definitely be buffed out. So yeah, this is really good looking. I can't wait to go to example two, which actually has a lower megapixel camera taking these images. Here you can see we have a data set about 40 images, a uh, link will be in the description. And here you can see it's nothing special, it's just uh, pictures that were taken in the public, right? And here in Mission, you can see, oh yeah, it has all the metadata needs to uh, just reconstruct it. So after this is done, I'll show you the reconstruction and also show it in Blender for you so you can see how it looks. And here's the reconstruction. Now, the reason why this was off camera is because this takes an extremely long time to do, and your computer will probably freeze at structure for motion CL. Um, that's why I couldn't really film it because <laughs> there was nothing interesting to see. But when you're done with the mesh, you'll have this weird fin, right? Uh, these dots. These are all the data points. This is where it found special information to build the mesh. This isn't the mesh, but when you're done with texturing CL, you already have your mesh ready. The way you get to it is, is you go to where you saved your project. And you'll see a folder called Meshroom Cache. Just open it. Open Texturing CL. Open this weird folder. And you'll see this textured mesh. And that's actually the mesh. You already have it ready to go. And here we are in Blender with our mesh ready to go. There's just one problem. And it's not these small patches um that's because there wasn't enough data we didn't take pictures from above and also here at the side we didn't have pictures from the behind so that's why that didn't work but we have another problem if we go to the modeling tab you'll see yeah that's a lot of vertices and quite unnecessary so something we'll definitely want to do is we want to go to our modifier set and add a decimate modifier. And we'll just decimate the mesh until we don't see too much of a loss of detail, but it being manageable. Um, I mean, look, we're already at almost 50% uh, of the mesh's original quality and... Uh, it's still holding up pretty well. Uh, wait a second. Uh, let's try 10%, 0 0.1. It seems to hold quite a lot of... But yeah, I, I think we did lose too much detail here. Yeah? So you can just press on this down arrow. Arrow. <laughs> and pin apply. Might take a while because it's really removing a lot of it. So now if we go to Molly. Yeah, this looks way better. It's way more performant. I think you want to decimate it a bit more for a game engine. But still, I think it's way better than the original batch. And it's going to be way more performant. And here's the basic render and cycles. It has all the basic settings, just 128 samples. And open image denoiser at the end. And honestly, for 14 images, this is really shocking how much data I could pull from those 14 images. And the result is actually really good looking. I think if you have more images, you can make a game ready asset in no time. And uh, the thing is, like I said, 14 images actually is not a lot. Um, I, re I recommend at least 50 images. I feel like 50 is enough to really get all the details. But for 14, look at how much detail we got. It's just so mind-blowing that a program like this is free. Freely available to anyone that you can use your phone or camera. It's just, it blows my mind, honestly. So to really drive home the point of making meshes this way, I'm going to tell you a few pros and cons of doing this. Uh, some of the pros, it's completely free to do. You probably have most of the hardware available. And uh, it really gives you pretty good results, actually. 
Um, it's really detailed, but some of the cons is it takes super long to actually process the mesh. Uh, the first example took about 5 hours on my 5500 XT 8GB version. Um, which is a pretty long time actually. And uh, it needs very good lighting. Uh, uh, not necessarily good, but needs even lighting. That's really one of the important stuff. And also you can't really take pictures of reflective stuff because reflective stuff really messes around with the algorithms. Other than that, it's a pretty spot on and pretty good way to make meshes from the real world. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. If you like the content, please subscribe. Hit like if you liked the video. Hit dislike if you didn't. Anyway, good night.